you're listening to Pro Wrestling for Life with x Pack Sean Wong. Woo! Welcome to the very first episode of Pro Wrestling for Life. I'm your host, two-time WWE Hall of Famer, X-Pac. That feels weird, calling myself X-Pac. <laughs> like, anyways, hey, uh, right now I want to bring in a producer slash co-host, Nick Hausman. Nick, what up? I, hey, Sean, uh, it's me, zero-time WWE Hall of Famer uh, and wrestling Nick managing editor, Nick Hausman here to uh, be a part of this huge historic moment, Sean. I'm very excited to be a part of yeah, for, dude. for life, man. I just called you dude. I usually don't do things like that. It's okay. Sometimes it comes out. Um, but Nick, hey, can you share with everyone what you know what's coming up on the show and what Absolutely. it's gonna be like? Absolutely, man. This is a big event here, a big hoot nanny we're having here at Pro Wrestling for Life. And uh it's not just Sean and I here. No, I mean I'm actually gonna like disappear here in like 10 minutes and you're not going to hear me again until, you know, like the very end of the show, because right after we talk some news here at the top of the show with Sean, uh, first you're going to hear uh, Sean's interview with Ric Flair. Now, we put aside like 30-ish minutes to talk to our guests here on the show, but sometimes those interviews go longer. So you're going to get to hear the best like half hour chunk of Sean and Rick's interview. And then if you want like the full, I mean, they went like an hour and a half. I mean, I, Ric Flair is a pull of string. He just kind of goes. So if you want the full thing, We've put that in an ad-free version of the show and the beginnings of the X-Pac 12360 archives over on the Pro Wrestling for Life Patreon. It's only $5. We only have one tier. So if you don't want to listen to the ads on this show, if you if you want to hear more of Sean and Rick or, or all of the guests we're going to have on the show, head over to patreon.com slash pro for life. And then after the Ric Flair interview, you're going to hear from Sports Illustrated's Justin Brasso as, as you and Justin talk about uh, your return to WWF in 1998 after leaving WCW. And then at the end of the show, your favorite part, Sean, the thing I know you have been most excited about for yes. this debut episode, you are bringing to life your brainchild known as Tick Tack Toehold. Sean, what can yeah. you expect from this game show you're rolling out here? Well, this <laughs> Nick, I know you're probably too young for it, but a lot of people that are listening and watching uh, remember Tic Tac Doe at Wink Martindale. And it's basically that, except for without the bonus round with the dragons and all that. But the, the main part of it, except for all the categories, just have to do it wrestling. So it's like, it's like that. And I've been wanting to do it forever since I started podcasting. And, yeah. Um, so now you're making my vision come true. And I can't thank you enough, Nick. Hey, you and it's, Michael. It's not, actually it's actually it's it's our it's our other co-host, Michael Weissman, that really brought that to life. So. Yeah, it's other co-host producer, uh, the guy in the booth, uh, Michael Weissman, the guy who does all the behind the scenes things, and he may show up as Vanna White style here at Tic Tac Toe Hold. Michael has put together this game board that is fantastic. And so for the for, for those that don't know, then we've been running this contest over at Pro Rest for Life. That's the Twitter handle for the show. And it was if you bought one of the first logo tees, you had a chance to be one of the first two contestants. So we have our two contestants, two fans of your Sean. I love this. We're going to start the show here with us talking the news. Then we're going to have Ric Flair. Then we're going to have Sports Illustrated Justin Brasso. And we're going to end the show with you and two of your most hardcore fans playing like a fun pro wrestling trivia game. This is like, this is my dream show. It's like I had something to do with putting it together. It feels wonderful, Sean, you know? And to me as well, Nick. Like, yeah. seriously, man, like, you know, can decide. Um, yeah, I'm really stoked for this, man, this whole project. Not just the tic-tac-toe hole part, but um, yeah, man. I've been, yeah. You, can ask, you can ask my wife, Angela. She's just been like, oh, man, I didn't know I liked Nick this much. Because, like, you know, I've been walking around really happy about what's been going on, Nick. You well, know? I'm really glad that I brought happiness to your home life. You know, mm -hmm. I mean. I'm excited, man, because, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, but here's the thing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll, I'll call it out there. Like, I've been fortunate to get to do some some big podcasts with some other names out there. You know, Bret Hart, Eric Bischoff. This is, you know, I even did one with Bill Apter for a time. He was a great guy. Um, legend. But, yep. like, John, the thing that I like working with you is, like, you're a creative thinker, right? Like, I know when you talked to me about how you would put together your matches, you know, your your classics and stuff. 
how you were a lot, you were the guy a lot of the time coming up with ideas for creative. most of the time, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and, dude. And people just deferred to me because I was really good at it. I mean, like the biggest names you could think of deferred to me. Yeah, it, you know. Yeah. So would you say to me, I got this idea called Tic Tac Toe Hold. My instinct is to say. Yeah, we got it. Whatever that is, because this is a man who comes up with great ideas. It makes me sad it took this long for this thing to come to fruition because it's a great idea. And I love that you have ideas that we get to play with and, and bring to life yeah. here on the show, you know? Yeah. And, the, you know, like when my, when I get like back to, to thinking and, you know, uh, talking with other people about things, it, it, you know, it stokes the creative juices. <laughs> and like, cause I kind of, you know, it's easy to get like mentally lazy, man, when it comes to that kind of thing, Nick. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And then, you know, as I'm older and, you know, a lot of shots to the head and, um, you know, cause so there's issues that we have, not just me, but the other guys, you know, other like colleagues of mine, you know, like, you know, and just as we get older in general, not that I'm an old fart or anything, but you know, you notice things. <laughs> so I, I need, I need to exercise the brain. But it's also like you're 48, man. Like you're the oldest 48, I think, of anyone on the planet Earth. I don't know if there's anyone older at 48 than you. And I'm only 12 years younger than you, which yeah. is like because it's a thing that comes up when people are going to hear from Rick here. I don't know if it's in this or in the long one, but like the age gap between you two, you know, like the fact that you're only 48. Rickson is like 72. now. That's insane. Right? Yeah. And he's like, if you got people would consider you guys like contemporaries, you know, right. So, uh, and you know what, on that note, this is a good pivot. You and Rick have another thing in common. Uh, you're both now two time WWE hall of famers. Uh, a lot of fans really interested to know, uh, cause you're, you're fresh back. You're fresh back from, from Tampa. You're now yeah. back in LA. What was the hall of fame experience like for you, man? Man. Okay. So it was kind of, I'm not gonna lie. You know, they flew us in, um, the night before we took the COVID test uh, and then they had us up and at them at 7 a.m. And we were at the build, like we were at the building since eight and it was, you know, that was a little, that was a little rough, you know, especially like coming from the West coast and having the time difference and my body's all screwed up, you know? Sure. Uh, you know, like I got a little bit of jet lag right now, actually. <laughs> yeah. But whatever. Um yeah, so we sat, we did a lot of sitting around for a while. And then once things started going, they went quick. Like we started do, like taking the pictures, doing the, you know, like doing the, the rehearsal, and, which the rehearsal was, it was just like walking through, like just to get positions, I guess. Because, um, you know, like I was telling you before, um, uh, you know, like if you flubbed your line or whatever, like you could just redo it. Like, hey, take two sure. and then do it again. And they, you know, they chop it up. And edit. They're the best at that. No one's better. Sure. You know, and then WWE at that. And so, um, you know, I'm sure you won't be surprised to know that I did take two more than once. Okay. Yeah. During no. the speech. <laughs> you would have never. Yeah. Been. Okay. Yeah. And then, like, I was so, like, I was so. I wanted to make sure I got to thank my wife Ange and, 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 you know, the kids. And like, so I did that at the beginning and then just, I went, now that I got that out of the way. <laughs> I got a few things I want to get off. My yeah. about you. I was like, no, uh, uh, it's like, I couldn't wait to get the say thank you to my family out of the way. It was like, Oh my God. They hope they don't take exception to that. You didn't, you didn't plug the podcast. Uh, I'm guessing. You didn't get a chance to plug pro wrestling for life, like as part of your acceptance. I did not. I did not. No, I did well, not. You know, and you know, like, like people were plugging stuff too. Yeah, you it's should just have not my style. Podcast. Well, the the thing is, I thought you might because we have an NWO tie-in with the name of the show. It's NWO right. for Life, Pro Wrestling for Life. I thought that you know, even on like a subliminal level, you might be able to work it in. You know. Nah. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of the things I want to ask you, you know, we haven't heard anything about the inductors. Like, so was there somebody that inducted the NWO? Like who, who, how did that work this year? There were none. No one. No. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. No. And, and in 2019, I don't think there were any then either. Were there? I, I mean, I've been to a couple of hall of fames and I always remember inductors. I, I yeah, no, up, up until 2019. And then they changed everything. Remember? Cause I mean, they changed the whole thing. I'd have to, yeah. They didn't. 
Okay, well then fine. That may not be a new thing. Okay, so no inductors this year then. Okay. No. No, just you know, Jerry Jerry Lawler was out there um hosting like he normally would, and then it it would go to uh a video package. You oh. know, and the it was almost like the video package was the induction or the you know, you know what I mean? Did you did you feel like there was too much Hogan, not enough uh six in the video package, or were you I think there was just the right amount of everything. Okay, cool. Yep. I am just fine with having a little sprinkle of six pac. Well, and, and you think about the Hall of Fame too, Sean. And like I've brought this up, and I don't think it made the Sports Illustrated article or not. But like you're the only two time Hall of Famer now that does not have a solo induction. So, right. you know, the door is open for you to be a three time, the only three time WWE yeah. Hall of Famer, man. Okay, you and like everyone, like not everyone, everyone, but so many other people keep bringing that up, and I've stated over and over again. The last thing I want to do is go out there uh, by myself in front of all those people and give an induction speech. I'm happy with these two right here. Okay. Like, there are so many people, Nick. Yeah, it sounds great, three-time or whatever, but there's so many people that deserve to be in the Hall of Fame that will never make it because there's only so many slots per year, you know? Yeah. And, like, I just, I just, like, let somebody else have it, man. Man, that you know? is so you. That is so you, dude. You're like, you're a totally different point in your life dude, right now. Man, I get because... sick of myself. Heck, you get yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, that's that's really nice, you man. But uh, like the other person, when I, so like a lot of great people. Kane's in the Hall of Fame. I know, I know you're very excited about him, Molly Holly. But like, the fa- my favorite part, Nick. Okay, go for it. Sorry, yeah. William Shatner. I was gonna ask about Shatner, dude. That's what I was about to ask. So like, he was cool. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember, like he did that that album where he just said the words, the songs. Yes. Well, God, I I can't give it away. Anyways, it was there was it was a play on that, and it was great. I mean, I just I loved it. So you thought it was? I thought it was great. You think the people enjoy this one, then? Yeah. I I I don't see how they would like if if you're a William Shatner fan, and so many people are. I just don't see how you don't get a kick out of this. Okay. Did you get to uh, Did you get to catch up with Vince? Everybody always likes to know how Vince is doing. What was that? Yeah, he showed up like after after we did everything, and he took the pictures with us. You know. Okay. Uh, that's it. He was. It was it good to see him. Vince looked good. Okay. Looked healthy. He wasn't running gorilla like he has in years past. He wasn't running the. No, show. no. Paul was. Paul was doing all that. Oh. Okay. Paul and John. You know, Johnny Ace was. There. Johnny Ace is always like they just put him ahead of. Uh, head of talent relations again but like he's been around doing like produce like like he's like on a headset and gorilla position like every time i'm there for the past year or so you know a couple years so (laughs) you want you want to know how i describe johnny ace to liz who's not really a wrestling person uh i go that's the bella twin stepdad and then she knows who it is from total yes she knows knows him only from total bellas you know that's so crazy <laughs> uh we got Rick coming up on the show here later. Uh yeah. you know, they, uh not I think they're engaged, right, Andrade and Charlotte. So not quite uh son in law yet, but uh Andrade did get released uh this past week. I, I wonder yeah. if it was a huge story. What was your your take on Andrade getting his release here? I'm ha- I'm look, if they didn't have anything for him, I'm happy they let him go. Yeah. You know, because he didn't do anything wrong. You know, like and he's He's an incredible talent. I actually recommended him a, quite a while ago. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So, um, just to make a long story short, uh, after after um, Del Rio left, they were dying to get another uh, star from Mexico or you know uh, Latin America or whatever. Um, but like they like Canyon Teeman came to me and it was like, yeah, we're we're looking for somebody under forty. Six foot tall, speaks English, and doesn't do drugs. I'm like, I don't know if that really exists. <laughs> to be honest with you, like, yeah. I mean, okay. I'm just being honest, man. Sure. But so, like, it was the English part that was why it took a while for for him to end up getting there. You know, like, so, uh, but. Man, he just has a lot to offer, man. And when you're sitting at home, you know, watching the the, the months go by and the calendar, and you're 
your 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 wheels are spinning like man nothing more depressing well but the thing is like he's really unique because you know we've heard from a lot of talents here in the past couple months who are unhappy right but they don't necessarily get released right they get kept on container and you know made to sit out until the end of it like somehow he was able to get out and like there's also this reporter reports out there that he's not under a non-compete clause so that that's very weird to me thinking that he could just pop up you know, hypothetically in an AEW or, or a ring of honor or a new Japan any moment now, you know, yeah. I, I, you wonder, you know, why there's no non-compete or what happened or what the, you know, um, I just think it's a shame because I went through that in my career, like in my different, you know, stages of my WWE career where like, yeah. Okay. They took great care of me coming in as one, two, three kid. And, um, they pushed me and then, but like, it got to the point where, you know, Vince wasn't seeing in me what, like, I really like desperately wanted him to see in me. And like, there's not much you can do about that. Well, I mean, you can, you know, I can up my game, get better at certain things or, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, for me, I had to leave, Yeah. you know, and, and I came back and it, and it worked, but, um, yeah, just. Man, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking when there's just, you know, you want that so bad and you just, they can, you know, Vince can like you as a person and, and treat you well, Yeah, you know? Uh, but when you're, when you're not getting that creative satisfaction, like not a lot, I mean, they can even be paying you well and it still sucks. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Say it with us, Blue Chew. Blue Chew is making waves and bringing more confidence to the bedroom by offering chewable tablets that can help men get stronger and longer lasting erections. Oh, yeah, Sean. I mean, I, I, you know, I know that every man out there wants to feel very virile right in the in the bedroom there. And, you know, Blue Chew, they offer a unique online service. They deliver the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, uh, but it's in a chewable form and it's at a fraction of the cost. So that's nice. Chewable form. Much more uh, inexpensive than than these other leading brands out there, you know. Yeah, and uh, Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve hard. Did I already fucking say that? that? No, you. I mean, you can. I think they want us to really emphasize it here that you know mm-hmm. the harder, stronger erections that you get. You know, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if, if you've heard, but like erections on Blue Chew are like blue steel. A cat can't scratch it. That's so. Really good. That's good. So yeah, they're at all. I stole that line from a movie from from when I was a kid. Anyways, (laughs) Uh, I don't want the cat scratching my steel pole, but whatever. To each his own with your Blue Chew. So Blue Chew is an online prescription service. No visits to the doctor's office. No awkward conversations. No waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a nice, discreet package. So it doesn't say Blue Chew. Deal with your erectile dysfunction on the right. Discreet, you know, discreet. Yeah. yeah, the process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And those licensed medical providers, they're going to work with you to find the right ingredient and the strength for your prescription that you're going to need. Yeah. The one I like to use, Nick, is the, is the uh, Sildenafil, the one that's... Um, that's like similar to um, oh, Cialis. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's I like you. There's two different ones you can get. I just prefer that one. Okay, so you so yeah. you're so that's great that you actively are using this and you can testify that this is a great product. Oh yeah, I Blue Chew was on board with me um, for a while back when I was doing Xbox One Two Three Sixty. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and and like the thing I like about them too is like they're made in the USA. Yeah. They prepare, they ship direct, so it's cheaper than going to a pharmacy. I mean, it's a lot of great stuff over at Blue Chew. I mean, they're, yeah. I mean, for pro wrestling fans, we, I mean, you know about Blue Chew, but this is your chance to really try it out. You know what I mean? That's the thing about Blue Chew, Nick, um, is they've been so supportive of uh, the wrestling industry and wrestling podcasts. Like, um, so uh, I hope everyone goes out and supports them. And they yeah. have been, right? Blue Chew's doing great. I think they're the, I mean, as far as I know, I think they're the, they're at the top of their, um, you know, I'm not going to say the other, the other names of, uh, 
their competitors, but okay, they're at the top of the they're at the top of the heap. They're at the top, the peak of the erection. They're on the tip of that erection, is where that is. Mm -hmm. The tip. That's the best part. And blue. (laughs) Hey, so the tip. Uh, Just the tip. Yeah, I know. I'm glad that I'm glad that tickled you, Sean. Hey, so what else do we have here? We say, well, that's the thing, is Sean. This isn't just about us saying nice things. Uh, The listeners out there, we got a great deal for you when it comes to Blue Chew. So if you want to try Blue Chew free. Uh, use the promo code PRO at checkout. Uh, just you're going to pay $5 shipping, but you're going to get the free Blue Chew. That's bluechew.com, promo code PRO. Uh, you're going to receive the first month free. Uh, and that's great. You know, Sean? Yes. Once again, that's bluechew.com, promo code PRO, P R O, to receive the first month free. And we thank you very much, Blue Chew. Appreciate your support. Hey, you know, you just brought Roddy up and yeah. and it made me think like, you know, a lot of the stuff that we did maybe wasn't like your favorite, you know, thing to be involved in in your career. But um, was that like, well, just the stuff with the NWO? I know it wasn't. It no, wasn't like, like, no, you know, again, I wanted to be part of it. Oh, yeah. But then who um, would we have to work with? I- <laughs> you like you're the only life, one that was right? over. Hey, if you're not in the NWO, you don't exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah like exactly. Nate, the great, like the one, of the greatest things I've ever been involved in yeah. is that is that six man when you returned oh, in Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. they should have the they should have done that in a bigger building. I know they should have, but here's the deal. And I know you don't remember this, but the funny thing about this, and these are the kind of things that got major heat with me with Eric. He paid Kevin Green, who just passed away, but a very close friend of mine, more for that and the TVs leading into it than he paid me in a year. Oh, hell. Okay? Yeah. That's he. I mean, okay? And then number two, he and Piper got, Kevin stayed there. Piper went home. I go to Asheville with you guys, and all three, I take your finishes. Boom, living in the middle of the ring. Yep, the very next day. Yeah, yeah, which is fine. Why, why is it just me? I mean, I was. I mean, I look back at it now and say, I, of course, I get why it was me. But <laughs> you know, yeah, Eric, yeah. it was cool that we won in Charlotte. Okay. But- hey, so do you remember? Like, do you remember we had to fly to Georgia and go to the power plant and practice that because of because of Kevin Green? Oh, of course, yeah. 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 yeah and we were down there. You no, know, and uh, I remember Ron you said. I, I, remember, I remember you said, "I've never done anything like this in my entire life." No, no, I'd already <laughs> done it with Arn. Oh, did to you? Wrestle, to wrestle Kevin and Mongo. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we'd already done that. Oh. But it was, I think it was so well received and, and Kevin Green loved it. I mean, I can't say enough good things about Kevin. He did Kevin, his part know. for sure. Yeah, yeah. He was a great guy too. But man, <laughs> he, he, do you remember at Lakeland TV, I came and told you, or I told Kevin, I said, Dan, you got to have, you got to have Scott ease off for Kevin. Cause Kevin oh, because he kept going in on him. Yeah. yeah, you know, he was ribbing him, ribbing yeah. him, and, like, and uh, I told you, I told Kevin, I, and I, I thought I told you, uh, I said, uh, <laughs> Kevin called me and pulled him in the locker room, little Lakeland, Florida, right in that building, and said, I'm going to kill Scott Hall. I said, is he, is he making fun of me? I said, no, no. I said, he does that to everybody. But, I mean, he was, I mean, he's ready to, yeah. <laughs> I, go, I remember, Kevin. yeah. Oh yeah, it was it was really intense with him, man. He just, and oh my you know, god, how about like during that match? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just he 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 spit in his face and then tagged Kevin real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my no, god, I know. I know, I know. Hey, no, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's one of those guys that he's like an MMA fighter almost. It, yeah. It's hard to slow him down. Yeah. So intense, but I mean that's the way he lived his life, and that's why the guy. Ended up in the Hall of Fame, you know, and uh, but I mean, what a tragedy! What a great guy, a great friend, yeah. and way, way too early in life. Yeah, I'm honored. I'm but, honored but, to have done that with him. Yeah, as are you know, so many of our friends. It just seems like every other week, man, the countdown's on. I was just like, Buddy Colt just died. I mean, but he's like 80 years old. But like, when did Buddy die? Um, last week. Oh, that's old. I didn't know that. God, yeah. that's strange. Yeah. You know, Buddy was in a plane crash two weeks before I was. 
he was in that plane crash and yeah. went in the, in the well, single engine. Mine was a twin engine. He went in with um, Austin Idol, Gary Hart, himself, and somebody else. And that's where Bobby Bobby Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Shane, Shane died. Yeah. Yeah. I had never met Bobby Shane, but I, he was a real talented guy from what I'm told. But yeah, buddy, uh, they, they you misjudged your runway because of the the moisture coming off the ocean or whatever it was. You know, we've all flown in there in fog before, but they went to drink and, uh, you know, it, it literally almost tore Gary Gary Hart's foot off. Um, but then I, it was just a week later, maybe two weeks, that we hit the runway and or hit the railroad embankment in Wilmington, North Carolina. So that was a lot going on in the business back then. Jesus. Yeah, 75. You weren't born yet. No, I wasn't. <laughs> No, here we were born. 72, Nate. Yeah, you're, you're just yeah. three. I'm yeah. 48 years old still. Yeah. Yeah, 72 here. <laughs> Jesus. You're just, yeah. You're just a kid. I keep telling you. Mm. But every, every time I talk to Sean and these guys, now when I see them, and Hunter, they don't realize, you know, we start talking about, it, you don't think about it back when we're all working together. But I'm 20 years yeah. older than those guys. Yes. yes. Like all of my friends are, are like the only, the only close friend. That's yeah. closer to age than me is, is Hunter. Yeah. The rest no, of them the are thing. like 13 years older, 20 years older than me. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, uh, Sean and I were talking, and uh, when I wrestled Harley, Starcade 83, Sean was a senior in high school. Wow. Yeah, isn't that amazing? So, time You know what that by. brings up to me, Nate? When I, when I think of that match, I can't help wonder how you guys didn't didn't want to kill Gene Kaniski in that match. Yeah, I know. Well, here's the deal. It's it's um, it's one of those things. You you know that Harley was uh, in New York the night before, right? Yeah. You know the story, right? Yep. So, I'm just happy he was there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I remember. And they, I remember they yeah, and they used Gene. And not, I don't think Gene meant meant much in the in the match, but it was it, it what what it, I think back then and that now like having uh, uh Ali referee a match or having George yeah. Fraser who refereed a match or we had Kyle Petty one time. I mean right. Crockett was just doing things to make the event bigger. And it wasn't wasn't a Harley call, but he got in the ring and Harley, I mean him he was him and Han on I'll do a, a Harley for you. <laughs> he goes <laughs> he goes, this is about a month before Starcade. Ricky, I was gonna ask you if you mind if I keep the belt six more months. <laughs> I'm uh, getting divorced from Yvonne, and uh, <laughs> she's trying to take half. No problem, Harley. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> But he got there. It was a snowstorm and everything, but it was a historic night. I mean, for me, it gave me another opportunity to prove that I was, you know, better because I failed miserably on the first slap around. I thought I knew something about wrestling, but then I got on a plane and flew out of the Carolinas <laughs> with wrestling guys that, for an hour that knew less than me. It, it's a real learning process, and I failed so miserably. I mean, I, I've been wrestling Wahoo and Paul Jones and name it all these guys harley and terry or, or dory and terry and i think oh, i can wrestle anybody i'm i'm ready to go but i've oh i feel well, miserably but yeah but but nature eventually you eventually it got to the point where you could work with anybody like i mean it, yeah, was yeah, it wasn't the first time around i thought i could you know you just think oh i've got an hour of wall and guys i can wrestle an hour with anybody wow <laughs> i don't yeah. think so and then, you know, you know they, they they were mad. Eddie Graham was mad. They took the title off Dusty. So they they shut down Florida, basically. Made, JJ came in to be the booker. Yeah. And I'm wrestling Charlie Green for an hour every night. You, you know, so. Charlie Cook? Charlie Cook. I mean, yeah. yeah. Charlie Cook for an hour every night. <laughs> yeah. He'd never done an hour, I can assure really? you. I go to JJ. I go, why are we doing an hour in West Palm? He said, if the champion does every night. I said, no, but. <laughs> oh boy it was a rough but you know it all turned around and when we came back and the second time and the ceremony and 
here's where the genius of Dusty, mm -hmm. you know, comes into play. A flair for the gold, Starcade. Yep, yep. I mean, so many brought, I mean, you know, brilliant things that that he brought that people didn't think about, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and then all these Starcades later, it was it was amazing. Yeah. I mean, just to think in that and that that I I'm amazed and I'm very fortunate that I was able to be a part of all that. You know what I mean? It's it's history and what's old is new now and people love it and like all these podcasts, you know, yours is this is this your first one? No, I, well I mean I've I've had one going uh for like over four years. It's just uh Oh I didn't know that. Stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah Mar Maria Menuno's husband, Kevin Undergirl, uh got me got me going. Oh yeah, I, I knew he that actually, but I didn't, he I didn't actually know built I, the studio. Oh cool. Well yeah. that's great. Now is um but uh, do you do a lot of wrestlers on it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just haven't seen anything pop up, so they must not have said anything bad about me. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so, these podcasts, every time something comes up, right? If you have YouTube on your phone, mm -hmm. it blows across. Da -da -da -da. Eric, that I mean, it's so. Um, yeah, well, this is cool. I'm, I'm honored to be on it. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Nate. I was just, you know, I was great. I was, see, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even have asked you, like, because I don't like Why? bothering. You call me anytime. It, 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 when I text you, don't say who is this. <laughs> I didn't have you because I couldn't. I, I go. Congratulations, I was, I was a little. Um, do, I, do I have to go? Congratulations, congratulations, Sean. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you know who I am? I just did, I, I just wasn't expecting it, Nate. Yeah. I was. No, I was so it meant happy a lot to me. It meant a lot yeah. to me. A ton. No, it was cool. I, hey, I text everybody. I'm. Listen. Um, I think it's so important that the guys that, that did well in the business have a relationship. I'm just, I, I'm all about that. You know, we all went through a lot of stuff and we're all here still for a reason yeah. and animosity. You know, I was mad at the product, not, not at people individually, you know, but you, when you're mad, you leave something and you have, you just have this worst taste in your mouth and you just say things that, that come back on you. That you wish you hadn't said, you know, and then, you know, then when you have an incident like I did uh, four years ago, or I almost died, it'll be four years in August, then you wake up and realize, man, how important it is to stay in touch, yes. you know, yes. and, and to let everybody know how much you appreciate the friendship you've had. And, and every time I see you on the road for these Comic Cons, we have end up having a great time anyway, you know. Yeah. And with Kevin, I mean, I've I've really missed that part of the, of us, you know, getting together over the over the this past year with the COVID, has kept everybody apart, you know. So, I'll be looking forward to. I guess I won't see you in Tampa, but I'll, I'll be out there soon. Yeah, we'll yeah. get together. Yeah. Hey, Nick, Nick, you want to hop in here? Sure. Hey, hi, Rick. Yeah. How I'm, we doing, Nick? Hi, I'm good, Rick. Uh. Yeah, I'm so happy I could get you guys together. It was nice seeing you guys share that moment. I, I will confirm when I said, Sean, I go, Sean, I think I can get Rick. I think Rick kind of likes me right now. I think he might do this. Uh, yeah. he, he was like a little kid, man, getting to talk to you. You know, the fact this you guy. Know, hey, this well, I just would have never asked you, Nate, because yeah. I don't like bugging my friends. And, it, you know, like. Hey, listen, it, 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 if it's a, it, that's what I'm saying. My friend, the, the key word being friends. That's what friends are for. You know, this is fun for me. It's fun to talk about things. And um, hey, there's there's nothing better than feeling like you're respected. And I've never felt anything less than respect from Sean. And you know well, what? Well, the, be, being the flying <laughs> ointment man, he was the guy that got the heat. And we like we that time oh. I said I had more peace in the ass than he had world titles. Remember that? <laughs> Eric, Eric, Eric went crazy, but. That's what I I was thinking at the time, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, here, real quick. Now, uh, I'll jump back out. I'll give you something else to, to kind of roll into here. You talk about how you've never been disrespected by Sean. But when I went and looked at the history between you and Sean, there's like one incident that came up at top of the, the, the charts. And that is the promo on Nitro where Sean... Uh, slapped you in the face. So yeah, that, that was that, that was in Asheville the next day. It was a setup after the after you guys won to three. Yeah, but you know what happened for, with me, Nate? Is I got out there 
And like for me, I can't to go, even, what, what was the verbiage going into? I can't remember. Well, I came it was out. Something they, it was something they gave you to say. Yeah, but I, I wasn't doing a very good job of talking, and you were you were eating my lunch, Nate. And so I bowed up on you, and you yeah. pushed me, and just instinctively I smacked you. And it was man, I figured if you caught me, I would have got my ass kicked. So like, no. I, you just chased right. me. Up. Listen, hey, people don't get. I'm an intense guy, and I mean, I I take the business intensely. You're never gonna hurt me. Listen, <laughs> I had my people. I've I've lived a life for with I wrestled guys for real, like Brody and sure, <laughs> yeah. So I don't. I just an intense guy, and basically, like, I know the he, er, not Eric. Yeah, I gotta say Eric could put he puts me in these corners where I'm fighting all three of you that night, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and people so I were gotta, people were stirring me up, Nate. Like uh, like I was like I I got the impression like they were telling me. In in the six man with uh, you, Roddy and, and Kevin, that y'all didn't want me in it. You wanted Hulk, and so I took that. And and you should Hulk. That's that that was more appropriate uh, for you. Uh, and I, don't, I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't believe that. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't but, I, but just I never heard back that. On it. Yeah. No. no but but that, look, this is what was told me, and so it got in my head. Oh, they're trying to hold me down, and you know. So I had this yeah. huge attitude, Nate. And I like yeah, I feel I, really I, bad about it now looking yeah, back on yeah, I don't I, I don't think that that um if truth be told I don't think that uh that Kevin and uh uh Scott wanted Hulk there. And no they that, wanted that me in it. it. Huh? They wanted me in it but it just you know Hulk yeah, would have been but, better yeah. business. Well you it can't be sold out. We're already sold mm-hmm. out, right? Yeah, I don't. It was I can't remember where Hulk was. Were we turning him then? No. Getting ready to? No, no, he was already with us. But who? Well, who was the? Uh, who did you work with that night? Oh Jesus! I don't think he I worked really... with anybody. He didn't wow. work with anyone that night. Yeah, he wasn't there. Yeah, I can't remember. Wait, wait, it doesn't matter. But I, <clears throat> yeah, that conversation was had. I can't remember why. Because usually, man, the guy that if you want a guy in there that can really go. You know what I mean? Sure. And that would be you. So, yeah, but you- and then and then that's Nate. This is why, like, I crossed the line on more than one occasion. I feel like I disrespected you. And even if you don't feel that way, like, it's something I've always wanted to try and make right with you. And like, I'm I'm happy to be able to get to tell you this right now in front of everyone. Like, I'm oh. I'm really sorry about that, Nate. I, I I didn't take it like that. It's funny because I can remember the people that have disrespected me. I've never thought of you as one of them. Wow. Yeah, there's only a few that have, and I and you know some 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 for a reason I have no idea, but I hey, never Nate, thought of you. Nate, can I see something? How did you feel about my impression of you? What do you mean? Well, now you know they dressed me up like you to put the nose and the, you know the, and oh, we did I, that. I did. Well, you know, here's that here's that very honest answer. I wouldn't have been upset at all if Arn and I had a rebuttal interview. Yeah, like y'all should have just. The, the, what what should have happened is you guys should have cleared uh, the ring. You guys should have no, chased us out of the no, ring. No, or but, something. but how, how do we not? How do we not have an interview after that? Exactly. I mean, yeah. you know, there's there's some things that, it, and that's format, you know. But here, how can I get mad at you? And I found out it was Terry Taylor's idea. Terry Taylor, it was. Yeah, totally Terry's idea. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, I go. Um, you know, it was good TV, but it, it's only good TV. If we get to go out and talk about it, you know, not next week. The other we thing never that, got a rebuttal period. The other thing that was ridiculous was the war games when when Kurt oh, turned. Yeah. Like it was like it was great. Like the whole, you know, like you sold the hell out of it, and like, but like it just y'all never well, got that, you, you guys an, never got your no heat no. Back. There's an example of killing the territory. Yeah, the town never drew again. All those years, it was a, it was a, it was a, a good guy format to get over. That was the blow up in the town. It killed the town. But it, the worst thing was is that, in my, from my perspective, is the heat supposed to go on on Kurt. Yep. On Raw the next night, Hulk comes out wearing my robe, tears it up, and Eric never paid me for it. Cut the sleeve. I had one of those sleeves for the longest time. I don't know what happened to it. Fifteen grand. I never got no. a dime. 
Wow. Yeah. You know how much those robes cost now? A hundred grand. We're doing this show for the WWE Lost Treasures right now. Yeah. Have you heard about it? They found my Starcade Road. The guy won't sell it for a hundred grand. Wow. And Conrad bought the Conrad bought the black and white butterfly robe from Real Rumble ninety two and paid one hundred and thirty thousand for it. It's worth <laughs> all it. Stuff, all stuff you... I've lost. In the way. <laughs> well, just like Hunter in a the Four Horsemen DVD. We go this. It's like if there ain't no Mick Jagger, there ain't no Rolling Stones. This is Hunter says this. If there ain't no Ric Flair, there's no Four Horsemen. Yep. Then Hogan goes on my 30 for 30, which is very flattering. He said he leaves uh he leaves uh w uh w or leaves WCW, comes to uh WWE in the heyday <coughs> to trickle down effect, trickle down economics, Hulk said. Right. No more Mercedes Benz for the horseman. See, I'd be hot. That makes sense? Sure. Because that, that absolutely is not the truth. Those guys, I mean, we, the key thing is we never, I mean, we were like this. And our whole, we, 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 we I don't remember anybody even having an argument. Am we, I, just, I, we just wanted to go out and have the best match every night. And there was so much talent on the roster. Like, if I had a single match, I sat there in the curtain because I'm watching. Let's say I'm wrestling Nikita, right? Yeah. Well, the match before me is the Road Warriors against Sting and or the Road Warriors against Tully and Iron or Sting and Nikita. I mean, or the Rock and Roll against the Midnight Express. I mean, look at that. I'm watching this. I mean, every night we were sold out. And every night I got to go out and follow it if I'm not yeah. involved in the thing, right? But, I mean, we never had a crossword and nobody, we just, and we waited on each other. And, man. Man, when I got out of that shower, you know, I heard a holler, Beak, let's go. Right. <laughs> we went from there to the bar, and, and we didn't, you know, it wasn't about when losing or drawing. You know what I mean? We just, yeah. we, we, we knew we were good. We just knew how good we were, and we competed. You know, not, not talking behind each other's backs, but I, sure, I knew sure. I had to go out there. And sometimes it took me, I couldn't just go 10 minutes. I had to have 30 minutes just to, to accommodate my own ego. Gotcha. Because I want to yeah. have a better match or as good a match as the one before me. And sometimes with all that damn talent, I mean, you have Manny Fernandez and some good, I mean, the whole card was stacked. Like Magnum TA. I mean, but I mean, and then Tully, I mean, Tully and Arn and, and Barry, I mean, Barry Wyndham, Christ, how good is Barry Wyndham? Wow. I, mean, I got to see you and Barry work in Florida. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. More than it, once. Uh, the Battle of the Belt. Growing, yeah. Growing yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I worked with you in a, did I work you with a single down there? No, you and I worked in a singles. Well, we had a we had a, a nitro match. It was a it was a really fun match. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. But hey. but but our singles match and and this bums me out because my big singles match with you uh, was at Sturgis. And Sturgis is a beautiful place. But oh, what yeah. a, what I, a I shitty thinking, place to have a wrestling match. Yeah, I was the guy just wrestled Eddie Guerrero there. Oh, well, you and I wrestled there too. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we got and, those damn things. That what a waste of H, money, huh? I got. I, I have to. Like, I have to bring this up too about that, and and another apology. I because and I actually I owe the people because, like, I wanted. I was trying. I was lobbying, to to go over on you in that match. Like, oh, you know, he's trying to. You know, that whole mentality I had, and and that like that wasn't going to happen. I was have to put you over. So I ended up doing this lame ass you put your foot up and hit me in the balls and pin me when it should have been a figure four, man. Like, I mean, that's nah. what people want to see. I don't even remember. That. I know you don't remember, but I remember it a lot. Yeah. But I would remember it. Cause I like working with you. I can't. Um, but I, I'm just thinking to myself, I was watching the history and the rise and fall of WCW on one of those YouTube things. And the money that, that Sturgis cost them and the money the company lost on that. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't have that good a time, and I can have a good time anywhere. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it it was just the hotels were like old school. Nah, the like, the yeah. Ramada Inn. The yeah. best thing about the Ramada Inn was going in there uh, with Dennis Rodman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, I mean, I'll, <laughs> I think about the times with Mongo and Scott and. I just saw Mongo. 
Oh, did you? I, yeah, I talked well, to him. I mean, it was about a year ago, but it was it was great yeah. to see him. Yeah, I talked to him. Yeah, he's he, he's got some health issues too. <laughs> he said to ease off a little bit. Yeah, I, can I remember told him. him I said, I'm Scott. glad to see you alive, Mongo. Yeah, he and Scott would leave Nitro, and we we'd see him at Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's like when Hawk stayed over in England and we came back from uh, SummerSlam, you know, oh. Hawk and John Nord. <laughs> well, they make Jesus. it back for TV. Oh, from SummerSlam in in, in London. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hawk, yeah Hawk, Hawk told me Hawk told me he was lost for about ten days after that. God, he was gone. John Nord too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Hey, that was a wild trip. We're lucky we didn't. It might almost lost me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> One thing you know about me, I don't take anything. So, you but don't. when I, no, no, I, that's, I can, that's my only good thing I've ever done is stayed away from drugs. So, in, even marijuana, nothing. I was just going to say, you never even smoked a joint, have you, Nate? No, no, no. Oh, I did, I did one in college, but I, I, I'm not saying I haven't tried in college. I tried yeah. it. But one, one, and it gave me so much anxiety. Never again. So, hey, so everybody, everybody, some people like that feeling of, of being loose and kind of out of control. It, it's, I've never liked that. Even, I mean, I've had Jack Briscoe hold me down at a party, <laughs> wrestle me to the ground and try to get me to do yeah. something. I, to Jack, I'm not doing it. My dad put the fear of God in me about doing drugs and stuff like that, you know, because what happened was, I'm not going to mention names. When I first started in Minneapolis, with all the guys there, and you can go back and look at the territory. Everybody from Nick Bockwinkle to Ray Stevens to Dusty to Murdoch, Billy Graham, everybody. The time when they found out my dad was a doctor, I missed it at a training camp. I had five guys asking me to get scripts for my dad. I was just going to say, is that what they were doing? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I went yeah. to my dad and he went, Yeah, I don't mind doing one. And then, but the second time around, he said, What, what, are, you, what, what are these guys doing? I was supposed to laugh. I, don't, I can't do that anymore. Mm. He, he didn't get I me, mean, you know, you know, he thought, okay, I'll do this. My son is going to help him be these guys. But and my dad was very ethical, man. And when the second time around, absolutely not. But I didn't get it either. You know what I mean? It's the same thing. If you can take one, one Benny, right. They used to call him, right. Yeah. And get, and get a little bit of a, well, get a little bit of, yeah. yeah, get a little bit of a buzz. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll take two. You'll get double the buzz or three. Sure. <laughs> It's like you fettering. That's why they can't sell the stuff anymore, right? Yeah. Hey, Nate, you never did, like you never took pain pills, nothing like. No, no, I even I can't do. Uh, every time I've had surgery, I can't even do morphine because it, it it gives me anxiety really bad. As a matter of fact, when I had my rotator cuff done, the second one in Birmingham, yeah, I they took me off the morphine and they put me on Demerol, which wasn't doing much at all, and I I said to the the, the nurse, I said, I'll give you a hundred bucks. You'll give me a 12 pack of beer. And the nurse, <laughs> if they got off, we're going to got me a 12 pack of beer and brought it back. <laughs> but I got up in the morning and I got off the Demerol, right? I got up in the morning and you, you remember uh, Kevin Wilk, right? From down sure. there. Yeah. yeah. So I went down to rehab and they don't let you leave there until you can raise your arm over your shoulder. Right. So I didn't have any painkiller. I thought this is going to be no big deal. I can feel it hurt, but what they put that crank, you know, they lift it up slowly. Brother, I was sweating like I mean, it was so bad. So we were, we got with Demerol, and I've used I've had Demerol. Um, I think that was what they used on me. I think when I when I was in a coma, they might have used morphine. But when I woke up, uh, and actually I was I didn't wake up, you know, literally for what I woke up, but I don't remember anything for thirty days, um, and I'd probably. It was great that I had a chance to heal because my incision was, my incision was right right here from under my pecs, all the way to my groin. Wow. I mean, major, yeah. So it was. Um, I was really lucky, Sean. I lost forty three pounds. I couldn't even pop a cap of a up a diet, diet coke, and I had a stoma. You know what that is, right? It's a bag they attach to your intestine. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Is, is you wear on the outside. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wore that, yeah. It's like mine was a stone, but you wear the bag, you change it. Well, I had that for a year, and I didn't know until I got home to Wendy's house and in the chair that I had the stoma. 
Oh, wow. And that and that is too. What much. did that do to you mentally? Like when you like, did you think was there a, a point where you didn't know if it was going to be able to be removed or? No, no, we had to. When the guy wanted to wait a year, and we waited a year, and I went in, and um, unbeknownst to me, because the doctors don't tell you this, but they tell your wife, right, or whoever is, is involved in your health care. First of all, I left the hospital. They, they didn't give me six months to live, right? Yeah. So they didn't even make plans. So when I got better, um, I went in and uh, they operated on me one day, two day, three day, four, five, six, seven, nothing working. On the 10th day, the 10th day, because I remember I text Vince because he was checking on me every day. And I, on the 10th day, uh, they told Wendy in the morning, they said, if it doesn't, if it doesn't work today, we have to go back and put the bag back on and at noon it worked oh, wow, wow. yeah so see i don't worry about i don't worry about relationships i'm glad to be alive i respect relationships but i'm not i got i got a bigger fish to fry sometimes than sure. having someone mad at me for something so but but you never took like a lot of us we took we took paint bills to get through the matches even yeah. like and nothing like that for you ever huh yeah wow. nothing and then in my back, the doctor told me that I'd never be able to wrestle again after when a crazy plane crash. Then I'm wrestling again. Then he tells me I will have the worst arthritis in the world by the time I'm 40. Nothing. I don't feel great. Nothing hurts. It's a miracle. Yeah, it's an absolute miracle. So, like I seen something from you like a year ago, deadlifting 405 or something like that. I, no, that was that was, uh, at, on my 69th birthday. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's before I got. Uh, no, I did that. Let me see. That's four years ago. 67, because I did it before I got sick. So it's about four years ago. Yeah, that's because I actually was deadlifting heavy training with John uh, John Cena's guy. Yeah, I can't think of his name. And she was. I just wanted to see if I could still do it. But yeah, I don't do it now. <laughs> Are you, you know, still it's training, though? I, 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 yeah, but not that much. I do a lot of cardio. But... Um, you know, it's like the muscle memory thing really works for me. And if I start working out, I, I gain weight. And I eat as healthy as I possibly can. But I just can't afford another wardrobe change. <laughs> <laughs>
And so like my, my promo work, my mic work, uh, I don't, sometimes it was good. Sometimes it was kind of mediocre, you know, like, Sean, that was the promo of your life. It was. That and, one was, yeah. <laughs> you were nervous, but that's yeah. why like you could hear it's not that you were out of shape, but you could hear the 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 the, the deep breaths. Like yeah. you were so nervous on the mic, but yeah. you that moment you killed it. And and I think too, it's it's so hard for us now to look at it, it's it's context, but you look back to wrestling then to what it is now, wrestling so manufactured. You gave such an organic, raw moment. Like did, did Vince say to you before, did, was there any talk about your lines? Because that's no. stuff you couldn't say in 2021. No way. No, nope, never. No one ever told me, yeah, maybe you could say this. Maybe, they said, do your thing. I'm sure you have something you want to get off your chest. And and I did. It's And, you know, eventually I was able to spit it out. You know, uh, the, it wasn't the smoothest. Like, here I am, like, poking holes in my – it was it was great. Um and yeah, like I could poke holes in it, but it was the authenticity and yeah. like, you know, and, and all of that. And it, when we got back, we knew we, we knew we hit it out of the park, you know, like, and it was so important, Justin, like uh, not just for me, but for DX in general, you know, to keep that momentum going. Without, without, if he's not the biggest star in wrestling, Shawn Michaels, he's one of, you're taking him out of the equation. You're taking Mike Tyson away. In theory, the next night should be a letdown, right? Yes. You made sure it wasn't. Sean, did you know going into this, I know we're dating ourselves a bit. Did you have an idea you'd mention Hulk and Bishop? Because you needed to mention WCW. You had to. You, you, I don't want to say you buried Hulk, but you made your point with, with Hulk. You made yes. your point with Bischoff. And just as importantly, and we'll get to this too, you mentioned Scott uh, Nash and, and Kevin, excuse me, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. You were careful to put them over in yes. a very determined way in a way that, that highlighted WWE and hurt WCW. Did you have any of that planned out or were you just, were yeah. you just live and off the cuff? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, we were sued over that. Eventually I had to do a deposition on, on that particular thing you're talking about. Imagine going to court for that. Because like, if anyone's not familiar with exactly what I said, at one point I said, and Kevin Nash and Scott Hall would be here with me right now if they weren't being held hostage by WCW. And so when when I'm doing the deposition and the Turner lawyers, WCW lawyers are asking me, why'd you say that? Like, I just told them the truth. I said, well, the night before I was talking to Kevin and Scott and they said it would be a good idea if I said that. And their lawyers just like, oh, Jesus. I, like, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I mean, that's 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 the truth about that. We were talking that's about that beforehand. But yeah. that, that to me, Sean, is that's why you guys work. And it wouldn't, you mentioned uh, being authentic. The click, and you guys had multiple detractors, right? But oh, you sure. guys to each other were were always on. That's you right. always had each other's backs, whether it was Scott, Scott and Kevin over in Atlanta, and you and uh, Hunter in in New York. It just seemed like even there, you guys had had one another's back. Oh yeah, and even when I was still in WCW, uh, I remember one time DX just Kevin or not just just Sean Hunter and and, and Joni. We're out at Venice Beach on Muscle Beach doing some kind of appearance and it was being filmed. And Scott and Kevin and I were in town and we just showed up and crashed the crashed the appearance and they were filming us. And like I'm pretty sure that Kevin like, that Sean and Paul got a little bit of heat for it, but it was like, what, what were they gonna do? You know, we just showed up. <laughs> do you remember listening to that tape back? Because there's so many unsung heroes of that moment, and I'm sure he has other times too, but Jim Ross made you sound like made you look sound feel yeah. like a million dollar acquisition like yeah. jr's brought he was so critical i thought to your presentation sean what do you yeah. recall about that i i just remember him saying oh look who's back and just yeah like it was a big deal that i'm that i'm back you know and that's so important and jim yeah. was he's just he was always so brilliant when it came to that man i mean from my from my point of view i just i'm such a huge jr fan you know but uh, yeah, yeah, I and do. that night's critical. It's a it's a key a key moment, uh, you know, because again, you're losing key people. WCW's on fire, and, and they have such star power. You lose Brett, you lose Sean. Do you did, do you remember when you walked into the venue that night? Did you? I know we're dating ourselves again. I keep saying that, but do you remember who you saw that night? Did you ride with anyone in particular? Do you remember any any specifics, Sean, about that evening? No, I don't. I don't remember. Blur. Like I don't remember afterwards. I remember seeing. <laughs> I remember seeing Davy Boy. 
earlier in the day. And that was the first time I'd seen him in quite a while. Like, and for some reason that sticks out to me. Uh, but other than that, I don't have a lot of like, it's still, it, it's kind of fuzzy, you know? Uh, well, it's a big moment. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned Joni and I think that it's funny. I watched this over and over again and Joni makes it, you know, Hunter is intense. You come out flying and, and I love how Hunter meets you on the ramp. It's such yeah. a cool moment. Joni never smiles. Joni never breaks. It's this high intensity, high octane moment. And she is stoic. Yes. Her, her, that, that to me is the perfect contrast. Like right there, I felt like you had lightning in a bottle and she's such a big part of it. Can you touch on her role that night? Well, I can just, I can touch on her role just in general. Uh, besides that, that night, um, I said this at, during the DX Hall of Fame induction. She was the magic ingredient in yeah. DX, in the DX recipe. Uh, no doubt in my mind. Uh, it was just, it was so different, Justin. And, um, and then Steve Austin starts selling for her. Like Steve, Steve will roll out and like, boom, she hits him with a flipper and down he goes. And it's like, oh my God, Steve Austin just went down from a freaking forearm shiver from, from China. And like, so then like, it's like, oh my God, she gets people in trouble too. It's not just, you know, for show she's also can the crowd is, was can, res, connected with the performer. You couldn't have just put another muscular woman in that role. That no. that's not why it worked. It worked because of Joni. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, because I mean, obviously there's been other, you know, other females in the industry that were, that were built like that, you know? Um, it's just, it's just different, man. She was just so special, you know? Uh, I mean, even like, I don't want to get off too far into the weeds with her, but like, I mean, just even after she left and went to new Japan, she's the only woman that's ever had a match in a new Japan ring, you know, like her match with Chono and, uh, just, I mean, yeah. A genuine star. Yeah. And you mentioned like, these are real feelings, real emotions. It wasn't yeah. a show. Like you weren't, it wasn't a, that's why I think that night. And, and again, that's why I wouldn't pick apart your, your, your promo. It was so real. When you mentioned about cutting the mustard with Hulk, yeah. it's funny because Hulk's a massive star. Then now yeah. I mean, Hulk's so special as a baby face as a villain, but Sean, in terms of cutting the mustard, like you were special in the ring. Like that was a real comment from you. I don't think that was something you were like, you know, it wasn't a car. It wasn't the character speaking. It was the kid speaking. Yeah. No, the whole thing was was just legit. Like you know, like for me, I, I it was always like to have that like that realness to it, man. You know, like I mean, like those were real feelings, and and like, uh, and that's what worked about it. You know, like it didn't have to be the smoothest promo or whatever, like because they believed in us, man. They believed that what we they, they knew we were all having the time of our lives out there. Like they could just see it, right? Like you could see it. And and just like everything was resonating, Justin. Like everything, talk, man. And it's not like you were doing now, you guys did the sucking at the end, but I think the cool part of that promo is I almost forgot that, by the way. <laughs> Cause I just got back and I wasn't used to the suck it thing. And right. he's like, don't, don't forget to suck it. Like, you know, so if you could kind of tell if you look at it, that Hunter had to remind me. But what's so telling, that's fascinating. And what's so telling about that promo is normally now we, we know, I say we, the crowd knows how to respond, when to respond. Like you kind of go with, you know, I go, it always makes me think of sing along with the rock Dwayne yeah. would say to the crowd, but your lines were unscripted and, and it wasn't like the put that in your pipe and smoke it had right. been said before. Like the crowd erupted at some of these lines, Sean, what, sure. whatever you, whatever you had for nerves must've completely just been confidence by the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> Even when like I said some stuff that was ridiculous. Like I remember like I didn't take too much, like, you know, it didn't happen that often, but sometimes like they were, somebody would hand me some verbiage, like, Hey, what if you said this or whatever? And somehow Vince Russo talked me into going out there and slipping the term, getting jiggy with it into the, into what I was saying. And it was so forced. It was just like, and Oh man, it's embarrassing. Like people that are listening or watching right now, it's out there. If you want to look at it, it's really cringe, man. 
But even even like when something like that would happen, the people they just they just bought, you know, they bought it all, man. And it was it was so man, it was such a great feeling. One of my issues with Raw 25, and I was at the I was at I was at the venue with you. Uh, we did an interview with Shawn Michaels beforehand, and it, it was an odd night. It was choppy the whole night with the two venues. and yeah. um, But I, I wish, in doing an interview before the show with, with Shawn Michaels, and then obviously you being there, and I know you guys aren't focal points of the story right now, but I wish they did stuff particularly with you and Shawn. It could have been dis- uh, not connected, but growing up on Raw. Like, you yeah. can't, but it's very few people. Like, Shawn Michaels, for better or worse, his life has been on television every week or once, yep. right? Yours too. Yep. You guys have such a different perspective. I wish that the Raw 25 went into, again, it, it didn't need to connect. Not everything yep. needs to connect to that night's show or the next week's show. That would have been a cool moment because, Sean, you literally grew up on television. I did. And um, and just, you know, that that thing, that one, two, three kid storyline, like that, that started on Raw, that was the first big, storyline they or angle we call it they that they ever shot on raw you know they used to shoot all the angles and for you know to start the different programs uh with they used to do that on like the the the, uh syndicated show like superstars right right like that's where they would shoot all the big angles and then like it worked so well with that like they started you know they started doing it more on raw even yeah, it's it's such even the the run it never gets talked about because which is a good thing I suppose because you have so many highlights in your 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 highlight reel. But yeah. the million dollar corporation run I think is very important because it allows you to speak as a heel, which yeah. you just didn't have that opportunity. Then you have yeah. the WCW run. Everything's building to this night in '98, Sean. But because you, you could speak as a heel, you could you could be real. You were yeah. undervalued in WCW. I just love the fact that you were finally presented as a star, this standalone star. Here he comes. Yeah. It's not, the big thing to me that night is the reason it doesn't flop is because of the end of the show. Terry Funk and Mike, Mick Foley make you guys. That that's yeah. such, can you tell what what did that if without that moment, Sean, is the night near is nearly impacted? Yeah, I just think it was a nice cherry to put on top of everything, right? Like even like well, because we need the we needed to tell the story that New Age Outlaws are with are with us too, right? So we had to do that. Uh, um, I felt bad because I think I just about killed Terry Funk with the chair, you know. And then Mick, I was brand new and I was a, like, you know, we're heels and like I went to go Bronco bust him and he rolled over onto his stomach. Like he talks about it in this book, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, that like he wouldn't take it at first, and like later on, like the move was over and like everyone took it, like no one gave a shit later, you know. But uh, it was funny that at first guys wouldn't want to take that. Um, but no, that was, it was, a, it was really important. Yeah, absolutely. Because we needed to, we needed to let everybody know, okay, new age outlaws are with us, you know, and this is the army right here. And I'm sure Hall and Nash were supportive. I mean, they must've loved, I mean, there's, there's few bigger fans of Sean Waltman than Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. Do you remember their reaction to the promo? Man, I wish I, I wish I did. I got like I know they did. I know I got texts from them or whatever. But like, from that, yeah. think, no, we weren't texted back then. It's pre. There's no. I mean, there's yeah. an internet, but it's very. The yeah, world we weren't is so different. Yet. Yeah, it's talking to somebody on a landline, which is crazy. Yeah. How hard the business was. Oh, I know. Forever. I know. I remember now. I would. I. It was. It was Scott that I talked to, and like he just told me what like the reaction that it got you know over there yeah eric was like yeah i guess i i guess i had that coming you know (laughs) but then we just kept on right showing up and and you know uh invading the office invading cnn tower so we just we kept on and i know that hunter was the guy the leader of that group and the outlaws were huge because you need a tag team in that spot and Joni was special but it's funny if you try to think of w sean waltman uh six staying in wcw you would have just, I feel like, Sean, maybe I'm wrong. You would have been another guy there. DX doesn't work without you. It just doesn't work without you. I I appreciate that. I Like, it's hard to, it's hard to, like, you know, do the. Uh, history, yeah. Yeah. Um, like, because who knows how it would have worked if the, if it would have just ended up being, um, you know, Hunter and, and Joni and the Outlaws. 
Like I still think it would have been strong. It just wouldn't have had near near the momentum. You know? Not, yeah. And that 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 was the moment to me that in, 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 it was the jolt of, the bolt of lightning was was your return and that everything flowed from there. I'm amazed that Vince just said go out there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was a lot, and especially like he knew I wasn't the smoothest, you know, guy on the mic in the, in the world. I wasn't known for rocking the mic that much, but it was just like, man, taking a chance here, do it. Yeah, but Sean, the character in your defense too, it didn't really. I mean, the character it didn't lend itself to to long interviews or promos right. like that prior, so it wasn't like you couldn't do it. It just it didn't fit. Yeah, yeah, that's true. There was a point there in the negotiations where I said. Never mind. Like they, like they lowballed me on the like J- Jim, like Jr. Um, he was in charge of that, and like he lowballed on the first offer, and word got out publicly, and so I was about ready to just say no. I'm, I'll just go like because Eric was waiting for me to call him and right. come back. So like it almost didn't happen, and and Paul had to like talk me into still coming. Actually. And you would have gone back because Kevin and Scott would have made sure you came back. Absolutely. And I probably would have been treated uh, a little bit better because Eric probably would have felt kind of a little bit shitty about it. Because even back then, Eric, Eric could be a prick. Like he, he'll be the first to admit it, but like he was still a decent human being, you know? And like, and, and I, I, I could, I could tell, you know? And it's funny if they, if they don't get you, you can't plug somebody else in. You just can't, I mean, you can, you put anybody in that spot, but it's not going to resonate the same way because there was a a real life moment, you know, the friendship. It's a fascinating. What if, if Xbox, and you're not even Xbox till the next week, you were the kid that night. That's right. Yeah. And excuse me. They're trying to come up with names for me. And like, I remember Vince was going, I know you don't want to be the kid anymore, but what if we call you the man? Like that was obviously before Becky Lynch, right? And I was just sure, like, sure. oof, I don't think it's going to work, you know? And so, you know, I already had X-Pac figured out. It worked. I already had it, yeah. Well, yeah. a great moment in time. Sean, best of luck. I'm glad to see you doing so well. You look great. You sound terrific. And I can't wait to to listen every week. And uh, I'm really excited to see, too, in terms of the rehab, the recovery, how your body feels. I just think there's so much potential Uh it's going to add a a lot to wrestling if and when you do decide to uh, make a comeback in 2022. Yeah, I'm not even 50 yet. So, Crazy. Uh, yeah, all my all my friends are so much older, except for Hunter. Hunter's close in age to me, but everyone else is like over 10 years older. But, dude, hey Justin, again, man, like thank you for the for the article uh, announcing all this, and uh, and again, man, thank you for for today and doing this with me right now. Uh, just like I said, just to give people something a little different each week. Really appreciate it, man. And I can't wait to see you soon, man. Thank you so much for having me. Best of luck, Sean. Welcome everybody to the first edition of Tic Tac Toe. And now I want to introduce the contestants. First, um, I guess he's from Parts Unknown because I didn't get where he's from. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Adam Clark. What's up, Adam? What's up, guys? Hey, man. Thank you for being uh, the first contestant. Thanks for having me, man. Show. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I'm a little, it's a, this one might be a little rough. I'm, I'm working the kinks out of it, so I appreciate you being here. Hey, I'm going to introduce you to your opponent right now. Um, he's one of the funniest comedians I know, and I know a lot of comedians. Um, I haven't seen him since his birthday party. Uh, anyways, he's a huge wrestling fan and a great guy. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Dan St. Germain. Means a lot, Sean. Means What's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Good to you see too. You. I was just, I was just, I was just thinking. Um, When's the last time I saw you? It was at your birthday party you had here on, on over on Burbank. Yeah. What was it, Burbank? Were you at Starcast that summer, or you were with WWE? You mean when you when you uh, roasted Bruce Pritchard? No, there was like a second one in Vegas that. Was, yeah. We were supposed to roast uh, Flair. Nate, yeah, Nate, and it didn't happen. Yeah. yeah, and then he had. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where you were at that time. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's it's been that long, man. Which seems like ten years ago. <laughs> 
right? Hey, so, hey, Adam, say Yo. hello to Dan. Dan, what's going on, man? What's going on, Adam? Dan, Adam. A whole lot. All right. Hey, so let's get started. Hey, do you know the, the okay, so here's the deal, Dan. Uh, do you remember Tic-Tac-Doe with Wink Martindale? Are you old enough for that? No, I don't. I know it. Okay. <laughs> Basically, why am I old enough for that? it's like, it's like Jeopardy. It's like, it's a trivia game, except for we're using, we're playing Tic-Tac-Toe also. So you have to get three in a row. And if you, you know, you got to win, you got to get the answer right to get your X or O on the board. But we're not using X's and O's. We're using MWO and DX logos. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Let's see. Let's see uh, the categories for the first round. All right. Category number one, mid-90s WWF. Pot puree, degeneration quiz, one, two, three, six quiz, X-pop quiz, world championship questions, attitude exam, Sean Stumpers, and finally, new, new, new world questions. All right. You want to get this thing started? All right. Hey, so hey, we're gonna let we're gonna let uh, Adam go first since right. he's he's a guest. Adam, that's like um, let's try degeneration quiz. Degeneration quiz. Oh, so you're not going to you're not trying to put your uh, mark in the center square, huh? Nope. Wow. All right. Like I said, this is the first time we're doing this, so. I like being a test case. <laughs> yeah, me too. Thanks. All right. For the first question. I don't think that, I don't know many people doing trivia games. I don't know many, okay, I'll correct this. I don't know many, like, like legit, like, former wrestling stars doing, like, wrestling trivia games. I was just, you know what, Dan? I was just trying to come up with, with different, like, creative ways to interact with people. Nobody you know, else. Like, that. I don't know. Did Bruce and Conrad do it at one point? That's no, different. I don't think so. I, I don't think they've like I don't think they've ever had any like guests or whatever. But I, I just I, I it's important. I want to have more of a relationship with everyone that's listening and watching. You know, it's it's also it's like you know almost every like uh, everything almost in wrestling and comedy is who who can you bury? <laughs> <laughs> the opposite of that. Although I bet you could find a way still. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, all right. Ready for question number one? Let's hear it. Oh, God. Boy, I don't know if you're going to be able to get this one. Oh, Name geez. the original four members of Degeneration X. Uh, it was Triple H, Shawn Michaels, China, and Rick Rude. Ding, 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 ding. Correct. Yeah, we don't have the soundboard with the with the sound effects yet, so like I'm using Human Beatbox or whatever you want I, to call I felt it. like I was really there. Did you? <laughs> yeah. All right. Exactly. All right, Dan. Okay. How uh, what mid nineties WWF. Mid nineties WWF. Okay. Here's your question. Who did Bret Hart defeat at WrestleMania 10 to win back the WWF championship? Yokozuna. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> Second match right. of the night. For... See these these are really hard questions. Was that was that like out of all the locker rooms you were in? What was like um, the most surreal? Like take that for what it was. Huh. Uh. Like, that, mid, that mid nineties locker room. This guy here. This is crazy. Yeah. Hey, that that early nineties mid nineties locker room before yeah. I went to W. Yeah, that was different, man. Like it was. Like I mean, because it was so weird. Because there was you had all different kinds of people. We had like we had like a neo-Nazi skinhead from freaking <laughs> Finland. Right. Oh, Lud yeah. Ludwig yeah. Borga. You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, are they the dark side about him? I don't know, but I mean, they could do a whole episode on on that. I think, like, if you knew his story, like after you know. Anyways, but yeah, so we had like guys like that. I mean, and everyone got along. It was so crazy. But yeah, it was it was really weird, man. It was weird. Uh, like you, had, guy, like, you, you know, Nikolai like Nikolai Volkov still in there too. Oh my god, don't get me started. <laughs> Bless his heart. It was like like 
one of the toughest opponents I ever had. And I mean, when I say toughest, I mean as far as trying to have a good match. And I felt bad because I said that about him. Like, and then I saw him at a convention and like he looked at me all, you know, and I was like, eh, I kind of understand. But all right, you guys. All right, Adam. All right, let's try the X Pop yeah. quiz. Wait. Okay. X Pop quiz for the center square. All right. What night did I return to WWE just before I became known as X-Pac? That was Monday Night Raw, wasn't it? Yes. Do I have to know the date? Well, I mean, you have to know, like, oh. what episode. Oh, God. You don't know when it was? What I... year it was? Oh, shit. Um... <laughs> and... Dan? Um, it was uh, the post WrestleMania 14 episode. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> um, sorry. Hey, Adam. Sorry, man. You had to kind of at least know it was uh, night after WrestleMania 14. Oh, shit. you knew that or no? Yes. I, I mean, I could have gone with that, but I thought we were looking for okay. a date here. No, <laughs> no, I didn't mean. Yeah, that's getting ridiculous. Like, no one knows. I, I don't have a clue what the date was. But, all right. So, oh, shit. This is, like I said, this is a work in progress. Like some of the rules are going to change as we go just to make sure, just to kind of streamline this thing. Yeah. Um, all right. Adam? You. Yep. Your turn. That was my turn again. Uh, yeah. Let's try new, new, new world questions. All right. Okay, here's your question. What WCW pay-per-view did Hulk Hogan Join the NWO at. Uh, I was bash at the beach. Ding, 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 ding. All right. So um, it looks like you have to go for the block, Dan. Oh, I have to. Yeah. World championship questions. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's your question. Oh, wow. Like all these easy questions and then now this one? <laughs> Holy shit. What month and year did WCW officially go out of business? Uh, let me think. Okay. How long do I have here? Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, well, give me a second. Yeah. We haven't made the rules. Like, like I mean, we don't, we, we don't have a rule yet for that. Yeah. How long? It's, uh, I know it was it was definitely in in March or April because it was right before WrestleMania 17. Okay. Uh, so I know that. All right. Um, Do you so remember I, the year? Uh, yeah, 2001. Okay. What's your What's your full answer? Uh, okay, it was March 2001. Ding 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 ding. Oh, damn. Dude, I didn't think you were gonna get that. Neither did I. <laughs> that was kind of hard, actually. <laughs> All right, for the block. Okay, Adam, looks like you got to go for the block as yep. well. One, two, three, six quiz. All right. Starting to get a little smoother as we go. All right, here we go. Here's your question, Adam, for the block. What superstar? No, I'm not doing this one. Oh. Uh-uh, never mind. Sorry. It's just too easy. Okay. Who did the one, two, three kid team with to win his first tag team championship in the WWF in early 1994? I'm trying to remember which one. Was it Marty Jannetty? Ding, 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 ding. Correct. All right, for the block. Is there, I mean, are. I mean, there's nobody. Well, there's, there's still a possibility that. that Adam could win. I don't think you could win, though. Yeah, well, no, he can. It would just be depending on who uh, who misses questions or not. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. So, okay, uh, Dan. Attitude exam. Attitude exam. It's gonna be a stalemate. Yeah. That's why I was saying the rule. We're gonna be adjusting and modifying the rules as we go. 
So this is almost a beta. Well, it depends on how long. If you if you guys want to, I mean, this is a test one, right? Or you guys? Yeah, I mean, there, we're, the people are going to see it and hear it, but like, right. no. But I'm know. just saying, like, this is the first one you're doing. You just yeah. have to determine how long. You know, if you want it to be a half hour show, then you you know you just keep doing it. Yeah, no, this this segment should be about 15 minutes or so. Maybe yeah. Hopefully. So, all right, where were we? Uh, attitude exam. Attitude exam. Okay. Ooh, this is kind of tough. Like, I think it's fairly tough. Um, what Raw segment is the highest rated segment in WWE history? It was the uh, Rock, This Is Your Life, Mankind segment. Ding, 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 yeah. ding. See, I wouldn't have, like, I wouldn't have known that, actually. I mean, now that you mention it, I, I would. But, like, if, if I was asked, I wouldn't have, it would have been difficult for me. But. Yeah. I was unsure when I said it. So, it looks like we're at a stalemate. Hey, um, hey, uh, Ed, what, what are we going to do? Do another round, you guys? I, do, I, I think, and hi, I didn't mean to jump in here, but. Oh, please do. I, I think that you should call this a draw. Yeah. Better than both winners. We'll bring Dan back as an actual guest on the show, yes. who, by the way, is sitting in for a contestant who bought the shirt and qualified, but, like, totally ghosted us, and we found yeah. out he put the time zone wrong. I mean, his, his, name might, his name might be Chris Marsh. He no-showed yeah. us. Dan um. was the last second to call in. So, <laughs> surprised I got that many right. He's really the only one who bought the shirt, qualified, competed. I feel like you should make him the winner and, like, you know yeah. – that sounds logical. Hey, Dan, 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 do you mind doing the job for Adam? Uh, I'm totally fine, Adam. It's good. For, it's good for business. Hey, Dan, I wasn't surprised you got all like I. I knew you. I knew you'd get most of these. Actually, like you're yeah. one of the biggest wrestling fans I've ever met. So I, I went over, but you got over. It's it's all good. Hey, <laughs> like, Sean, I, no, Pete, do you want to send something to Adam for yes. his? Adam, I, I'm going to send you uh, an autographed picture. How about that? That's sweet, man. Yeah, well, um, we'll get your address, and uh, we'll send that out to you right away. Sweet. Adam, that. dude, thank you for taking the time to come on the very first edition of Tic Tac to Hold. And, um, you know, it was a little rough, but uh, <laughs> we got through it. Dan. Dude, I think that's the new name of the segment. Forget tic tac toe hold. It's a little rough. A little rough. <laughs> <laughs> you have to change the subject matter. Name the whole show that. People smoking. <laughs> like an hey, hey, Dan, real quick. Uh, where can people find you right now? What do you have going on? And what's your social media? Uh, I had I had this uh, when when you knew me. I had a podcast, but I we switched it up. Now we have a podcast called Wrestle Roasts. Where it's me, Mike Lawrence, who was the season. Oh of yes, Rose Battle winner, Robert Carpolis, who runs the WWE Creative Ish. That yeah, part. and uh, Scott Chaplin, who's been on a bunch of Comedy Central. Oh, right on. Battle stuff. So we're uh, we roast like a legend every week, and it's all in good fun. We love the legend. We're um, you know, we just did the Hardys. We're gonna be doing Hogan for WrestleMania week, and uh, it's a it's a blast, man. It's a, it's a are blast. you doing it to them? Like, are they actually coming on and getting roasted? Or are you just roasted them? Uh, no, we're just roasted them. Oh, but okay. We're in the beginning. We're giving it. We're doing it instead of a dark side of the ring. We're yeah. doing a side of the ring where we put them over before we start the roast. Okay. So. So you build them up before you chop them down. Yeah, 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 and then build them up at the end, you know. Because the, the higher the higher the elevation you fall from, the you know the better. <laughs> I mean, look, it's only a matter of, matter of time before we get an angry tweet from Enzo Amore, but um, it, it it's gonna happen. <laughs> but still, it'll uh, be. Uh, uh, he shouldn't be soft then. S A W F T. Well, that's it for the first episode of Pro Wrestling for Life. Nick, thank you very much. I want to thank. Nate for giving us so much of his time well you guys got like 30 minutes of it but you can get the rest on Patreon yeah um, it's just like it's it's just us me and Nate and I having a conversation and you know just giving him the ball and letting him run with it so uh, I hope everyone enjoyed it uh, as much as I enjoyed having it with him so yeah. uh, absolutely and you know you're right Sean it is over in full right now over on Patreon for, for just $5 as well as the ad free version of the show and 
some other stuff we're going to be uploading throughout the month. But the cool, the, the, the even cooler thing is, if you don't want to do the Patreon, we understand, and you want to wait a month or so, we're still going to put the whole Rick out interview eventually over on YouTube.com slash xpoc which is where you can go to get uh, the the ad version of this show in video form if you want to watch us not just listen to us over on podcast form uh and again we're just going to be putting stuff up there so you know if you want to see it now if you don't want to yeah. wait five bucks over on patreon but we're not going to keep this stuff forever behind a paywall but uh, eventually it'll, it'll let out you know give the people what's yep. fun cool hey what do we what do we have coming up next week Next week, Sean, uh, we have another great guest on the show. You're going to chat with fellow WCW cruiserweight Chavo Guerrero. And uh, also we'll have on the show Bust Open Radio's Dave LaGreca, who's going to be talking to you about the infamous DX invasion of WCW. And we will do another round of Tic Tac Toe Hold. Uh, also, if you subscribe on Patreon, you will be entered into the pool of possible contestants for Tic Tac Toe Hold. We'll pick two every week until we think of a new game or something else, or this maybe this catches on. We do it forever. I don't know, but we'll pick two Patreon people uh, going forward to, to play the game each week. You'll get an email. Right so, on. Yeah, man. So a uh, lot of great stuff next week, man. A lot of great stuff just in the in the future we've got lined up here. You know? Cool. Uh, well, is that it? Am I missing something? I mean, we got a pro wrestling tea store pro at pro rest for life uh, over on Twitter, but that's, that's about it, man. I don't want to sit here and like, you know, blather on and on and on. We got a lot right of, on. you know, so I think uh, let's, I think we'll call it there. I think I'm good. Cool. All right. Well, we'll see everybody next week right here on pro wrestling for life. <laughs>